this time we've got a great guest on, I've got a personal friend that I've known for almost over 10 years ago as we were discussing before we came on air. This week, as you can see on the screen, we've got George Taylor, Edinburgh Pro Rugby player. He's got every, every single medal possible from the Borders Regional Rugby Championship. Played him, known for two years. Oh, I can't run out of words to describe the guy. Basically, if you've ever seen them watch Melrose play, George has probably got a medal from that game and he probably won the game that you were watching. So everybody, please welcome George Taylor to the Over and Aim in his podcast. How are you, George? How are you getting on? Sam, I'm very good. Thank you. No, pleasure to be on. Good, mate. Thank you so much for coming on, calling in an eight-year-plus favour as I am. Didn't expect it to go well, but you replied straight away and I was happy to get you on. So most important, I'm going to quest, most important question I'm going to ask you today, how are you? How's things? Very well. Yeah, no good. Um, managed to get out on the golf course today, make use of the, the good weather. So. <laughs> Um, Decent, where were you playing? What, how were the shots going? Uh, the course was good, the golf was awful. So, right. <laughs> playing, Some... I played at Archer Field, um, but just you, you, you tend to play a lovely course and then the golf just goes downhill. So, mate, sun was shining and it was like 18 plus degrees. Any golf is good golf in that weather in Scotland, yeah, true. true. <laughs> So, mate, we're gonna get we're gonna give people a bit of an insight into the interesting life of a pro Scottish rugby player. Only two clubs in Scotland. You're one of the lucky players that gets to represent them pretty much at this point every week. So, we're just gonna look through the start of your life. So, we're gonna start right back at the beginning. Obviously, like I said, me and you first met ten years ago. Peebles versus Melrose, under 16s, the derby of all derbies. Every club in the borders wants to tell Peebles they're not part of the borders. Every club people's plays they spend trying to tell them they are part of the borders how is it like playing for melrose from such a young age what's it like when you walk into melrose and you see all the names on the walls and you see the names you've got coaching you yeah it, it is huge to be fair i mean i i started out there when i was six years old um i remember getting a photograph with uh, my brother and kelly brown uh doing a summer camp out in the green yards and i think that was that was when I started to enjoy rugby. I, I watched Kelly Brown when I obviously when I was really young. So, and then being able to get a photo with him uh, was pretty big back then. So, uh, still, still, still got the photo actually. Mum's got it somewhere on the wall. I don't, I don't know, but um, but no, starting there from such a young age, and then coming through the age groups, as you say, playing playing the likes of Peebles and the all the other border clubs. Um, like there, there wasn't really a, a a game that you play in the borders that was an easy match. That you know it was, they were all kind of relatively big derbies. So, um, mm. and then playing under 18s, getting coached by Jim Telfer, uh, that was <laughs> that was a highlight as well. I was going to so, say the 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 what's it like when you're playing under 16s, under 18s. And obviously, when I was brought to school, you know, there's always the, oh, guys, it's about having fun. It's going like that. But you can tell when you've got an ex-British and Irish lion with the most famous motivational speech of all time. But do you hear it in his voice and stuff like that? It's like, right, guys, it's about having fun. But we're Melrose, so we have a lot more fun when we win as Melrose. Because <laughs> I don't think I, I, I don't, don't think I've ever played. I don't think I've ever seen or heard or played in a game where there's not been the like you were always you guys were always the team to beat as melrose is what i'm trying to say like is did you have that reputation from your side as well you're like we are the perceived best whether we are or not we are uh, we have that reputation well going back to jim telfer mm -hmm. like I, I never heard him say uh we're going out there to have fun like, <laughs> that was <laughs> never his motive he would always want the W, uh, no matter uh, who. Once, we're once you finish, once you finish a little story, I'll tell you about. It. It's the best trash talk I've ever received was from Jim Telfer, and I was fifteen years old. I'll tell you. About. <laughs> uh, but I think we were always quite, quite confident, quietly confident going into games. Um, we would never think like we're the, we're the team to beat, or maybe there's a wee bit more pressure on us because we we were kind of maybe as you say expected to win, but. Uh, you know, we we did have a good good squad, and uh, quite a few of the boys went on to play first team Melrose, uh, now playing Southern Knights, and and then a few boys went on to play pro as well. So we we had a good under 18s team, under 16s team as well. So got coached by uh, good coaches, which helped, um, and 
it helped draw in other players from other towns in the borders. Um, so obviously that would that would hinder other towns, but obviously help us. So um, <laughs> we we, we if didn't. You want, really if you want to be the best, you play with the best players. I don't I don't resent anybody for wanting to play for Melrose. I mean, the yeah, rest no, of people's the, the people's will like me when this airs when I say that, but I, d- I don't blame anybody for wanting to play for Melrose. I'll yeah, be staying inside think, for yeah. a few weeks. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we you often got the odd person from Hoyker Gala saying, no, I'll, I'll never never play for Melrose, but, <laughs> but you can understand it's a massive rival. Um, and <laughs> I, I think I, I managed to turn one people's player uh, to come play for Melrose, and that was Craig Pringle. So he <laughs> I, was, was, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna say his name in case he's on it, but yeah, no, shout out to Craig. <laughs> Craig, if you're listening, and hope you're well, mate. Nice to, if we were, we were jealous you left. That's the, we were, we were anger <laughs> in, we were angry in pure jealousy that you left. Mate, so, nah, yeah, we were pretty happy to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> but mate, yeah, going back, Jim Telford, the best, the best crash talk I've ever received in rugby because I was always, I was never quick enough or fast enough, so I was. I'll beat you with words and I'll try to get you cinnamon was my approach. And I remember I was 15 years old and I got a brand new pair of boots. And you know when you're class at young, you never break your boots and you just go, oh, I'll be fine, I'll chuck them on. And I remember yeah. it, was, it got it got to like half time and I was like, my feet are killing me. Like they're, they're torn up, they're blisters. So I chucked my old boots back on that were like, they were like sodden through, boots were going out. And I walked out and Jim Telford just looked me up and just went, lads, we're going to be absolutely fine. They can't afford rugby boots. And I was like, well, I'll be that. <laughs> I was, it, I, I'd never been so mentally defeated by one sentence in my life. But. No, no, especially when you're buzzing about your new boots and Jim Telford <laughs> just shuts you down instantly. Uh, just looks me up and down and goes, I lads will be completely fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he is, he is brutal, to be fair. He's, uh, I remember we were training on the back pitches at Melrose, um, just opposite the green yards uh, mm-hmm. over the road. Um and we had we had Jim one of the first sessions, uh, and he was on a crutch for some reason. Um, I think he took a fall, uh, but we were doing uh, rock clearing and body height, mm-hmm. and he was standing there holding his crutch um, horizontally. So you you'd have <laughs> to get low enough to get under his mm-hmm. crutch, and if you skiffed his crutch or whatever, you'd <laughs> you'd hit you on the back for his crutch. So. <laughs> It was oh. it was an old old school way of teaching you, but I mean, it it definitely worked. I was about to say because as you as you alluded to there, like the the standard and quality that comes out of Melrose. Because I thought we just faced an unlucky year, like obviously when we played you, because like you said, it was you, Craig. When it got to the age groups, your brother managed to get in that sort of bracket, and he came down. And then yeah. I remember I was thinking, I was like, man, we're just unlucky. They just it's one of those teams where just everything aligns and every player is in the same year group. And then I remember going to watch my brothers play. My brothers are both younger than me. And obviously they had people in the year like Kieran Clark and people like that. And I was just thinking, yeah. like, no, it's, it's just Melrose. It's just the way it just goes. Melrose. Yeah, it's just Melrose. It's just like, you could just get a hashtag. I'll, I'll send it to them. Just get a hashtag. It's like, just Melrose things. That's what it is. It's just Melrose <laughs> things. Yeah. But that's like, what's it like? Do you do you get a chance to go back a lot? Obviously, you were you were playing for them still quite recently. But like, do you get a chance to go watch the youngers? Like, do they ask you to come along and like help out with the youngers when you can? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's um, obviously with COVID coming in. Uh, mm-hmm. The last couple of years, I've I've been quite busy with Edinburgh, but then before that, uh, I was still involved with Melrose, so I was still playing for them and um, competing in the Premiership. Uh, and obviously, that changed to the Super Six. Um, but I mean, it, it's it's something that more ex Melrose players need to do, I think, is get down to the summer camps and um it's it's not been not been requested that much uh mm-hmm. from Melrose, but I think if just knowing from playing there when I was really young doing those summer camps, um I remember Scott the likes of Scott White mm-hmm. uh, and Cal Anderson, they were both big great rugby. Carl Anderson's people. <laughs> I don't have any of this Melrose nonsense. <laughs> Carl uh, Anderson. You, you just, yeah, I know. But you, you look at these names at um, the summer camps, and you you look up to them, and you're like, wow, that mm-hmm. like you see them do so well for Melrose, and and obviously do well for people's now. <laughs> um, 
I, if he I, it's, it's, it's good to see those faces there. <laughs> but it's like it's like you said, like you still you still remember a photo of when you were six with Kelly Brown, so but like Melrose it brings us players back. Like Kelly's a great example, obviously he brought Saracens up for the sevens and things like that. Like you you look after your own really well. Like you you the way I describe Mel I don't know if you see this from so when because obviously so I'm not from the borders, I'm not I was moved I like, moved up here when I was young, so I'm ra- I'm raised borders, but I'm not from the borders. And yeah. it was always a case of like it was kind of like Melrose versus everyone else, if that's the sense. It was like, as long as we beat Melrose, it doesn't matter. We could lose every other game in the season, but we beat Melrose. So, like, it's like you've kind of, you, what you did really well as a team was you made it so, like, we're Melrose and we're sticking as Melrose. And it's like, you can go somewhere else, but you'll always be Melrose. And I think that's something, like, there's a lot to say for that, like, as a club in the modern day game of we look after our own still. Yeah, no, I think so. And you kind of got hints of that. You, you wouldn't really think about that when you're playing there, um, mm-hmm. but you kind of got hints of it. Um, I mean, it was just such a tight knit of players. Um, it, w- it was very hard to, you know, when when money got offered from Prem sides every month, um, you know, you, you wouldn't really, you'd want to stay at Melrose. You, you wouldn't worry about the money. Um, you know, you'd have a, a semi-decent season um especially looking at the the players you were getting or had that mm-hmm. season so uh yeah as you say they they do if if anyone from melrose has played at melrose or brought up in melrose gets asked about their their rugby career i think melrose would always be mentioned which is they've mm-hmm. somehow they've done that well um and obviously homer sevens it's as you as you say, it's uh, it brings brings decent pro teams to to the sevens day, and it, it makes it a good day. Right, that's a good little segue. So we'll go on to that. What's it like representing Melrose in the Melrose sevens? At, like representing Melrose. Uh, again, it was something I always wanted to do. Uh, before that, I would be selling programs before, like during the sevens when I was under sixteens, under eighteens. Uh, and then managing to watch maybe the the lead up games to the quarterfinal, semi finals, and just like seeing the crowd, they were there to watch rugby and and drink pints and just enjoy a really good day. And then when I when I managed to represent Mowers uh, at, at their own sevens, it was it was ridiculous. Like you'll get no better atmosphere at a club ground. I think there's twelve, fourteen thousand there sometimes um, it's crazy seeing it on tv it's absolutely crazy yeah and just playing playing in front of them is yeah it, it's surreal to be honest it, it's it's a really great experience <laughs> question is if say you got the chance to go back and edinburgh go next year going we've got a team for melrose sevens melrose give you a call saying we need you to play for melrose and the melrose sevens Who's who's getting the nod between Edinburgh and Melrose? Are you just going? To be honest, I I don't think I'd get picked for the Edinburgh Seven squad. You know, we've got <laughs> you would be fine. We've got three sevens Fijian players. Uh, <laughs> You're not allowed to bring the, some... Fijians at sevens is a cheat code. You're not allowed to bring Fijians. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like FIFA with sliders. I, I don't turned know. Up. You can't play. You can't. It's like FIFA with sliders turned up. You're not allowed to play it. <laughs> I think I would get some amount of abuse. Well, I'd get abuse both ways. I think so. <laughs> it, it'd be a, a lose lose. God, then completely, um, completely off script and out of the blue. What's your Edinburgh starting sevens team? If you had to pick a team from the Edinburgh squad for a seven squad. Oh, positionally at. I wouldn't know. Just, but just, just, to, just go, just go balls to the wall. Just pick seven players. Just total. Rubbish. You'd have to go Bill Matter. Mm-hmm. You, I think you, the three for is Bill Matter, Messi, Kunavula, Aroni mm-hmm. So, uh, you'd, that's, that's just you'd the forwards. Need, just have them as the forwards. That's fine. Yeah, uh, you'd need Du and Van der Merve on the wing. Mm-hmm. Um, James Johnson's had a lot of experience in the centre. See, uh, I just, I Simmons. Pick him. That's, a, that's a good call. Uh, it, it would be, yeah, Dewey on the wing, but you've also got, yeah, Mark Bennett at centre. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, he's silver medalist Olympian. So, yeah, so he'll be in the centre. In the centers. Um, you got one space left. You've got six just now. So, you've got Bennett, Johnson, nine, and Dewey. And then you're nine. Nine, Charlie Shield. I think I would. Yeah, I, I think I'd go nine, Charlie Shield. Ten, Blair Kinghorn. Centre, Benzo. Bennett. Nice. So. And then Dewey on the wing. Dewey on the wing, I think that's pretty strong. Good. I can think of one Hoik boy that's about to run through you in this air. <laughs> <laughs> Darcy, if yeah, you're watching, gonna... I would have picked you, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, Dewey's away, so he he can <laughs> yeah. Darcy can step in for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we don't we There's don't to do anymore. Dewey is no. dead to Scotland now, is it worth it? No, we're kidding. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for making people watch Edinburgh Games again. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Mate, I got slit. I remember we did a thing for work and I put him in my Lions squad and we did this like in October. And honestly, the back you, the backlash just thought, you think I just told people to cancel the Lions tour? Like, the backlash we got. Oh. Yeah. And then Six Nations came around and, yeah. The border, Borders know their ruggers, for the listeners out there. Borders know their ruggers. If they say a player's good, a player's Indeed. probably good. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's best to keep your opinion to yourself, though. So that was a very loaded <laughs> that, that question. Is, that is the truth. <laughs> it's not. Lo- it's not loaded. It's all in fun. It's all in fun. And then just <laughs> next time that? we get well, next time we get one of them on, I'll ask them, and they'll just make sure like George Taylor is nowhere near the team. <laughs> not in it. <laughs> Water boys. Yeah. So mate, back to back to Melrose. Like, what's it like in that double winning seat? Because you were you and your brother were centre partners. For that like you were pretty much two stalwarts of the team. You had this immaculate team that it, it didn't seem to change week in week out. It was the same fifteen boys every week. What's it like in that season when you're just winning trophy after trophy, game after game? It's good. You you build you build a lot of confidence in the squad, and obviously being coached by. What was John DL and Rob Christie? Like they've got mm-hmm. masses, masses of experience behind them, um, and a lot of it was was player led as well. There was a lot of trust in the players, and if we wanted to run a, a strike move or a certain game plan uh, against a specific team, then we were we were allowed to do that. Uh, and I think that's that's where Mel's were were quite good. They. Uh, they kind of allowed the players to to feed into the coaches and depend on how they felt going into a game and as you say uh, our team was was very strong and and you had uh numbers that could fill in uh, that that might have played constantly for the twos but then would step up and were unfortunate to miss out in the first um but they could easily step up and and perform really well. So I think the the depth at Mel's as well was always always really good. Mm-hmm. No, that's exactly it. It was the case of it was like you said. No matter what fifteen, but the, the the lack of injury was remarkable. But the, the no matter what name was on that team sheet, it was it was like the same person just with a different name. If that makes sense, like they were so unbeat and so on point. Yeah, and obviously you're you're gonna if you're brought into the squad, you're gonna do the best you can you're going to do a job because every time you pull on uh the jersey you you, you don't want to disappoint uh, <laughs> and yeah i think there's there were there weren't many injuries um at, at, at any one time but <laughs> there was one time i remember Rui not was trying to do a, a, a physio run to get in preparation for the next game to see if he was going to be fit Mm-hmm. He he claimed he had a a dead leg just below his knee, so in his calf, and uh, he turns out he actually broke his leg. So he was doing all this running <laughs> for weeks and, and playing the game, and turns yeah. out he had a broken leg. So that's uh, <laughs> Mate, fair play to really not if like get your like yeah, you've earned that one really. You, I would have let him play as soon as I found out he was like, "Do you know you play?" Yeah, just play. <laughs> I would have been still have been there, full kit on. Then yeah, full kit on, lifting the trophy. Just go up and lift it. That's you. <laughs> yeah, no, he's he was some player. He was an asset. Right, so so moving on. Right, obviously you've just signed your new contract with Edinburgh. That you're now a stalwart of the team. But take take me back to the first contract. You're 21 years old. Most of your mates, same age as me, are all kicking about in university. We're living for a Wednesday night. Somebody's gone there and gone. We're going to make you a full-time professional rugby player. What's that? What's that feeling like as a twenty-one-year-old? 
Like how like what is uh, it like, overwhelming? Like do do you actually remember most of it or is it just like a sense of like this is the thing that felt uh, like a dream for so long and now it's here? Yeah, I I, I remember it quite well, uh, because it was very stressful, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I think the st- the season started in May or June. Um contract negotiations happen about uh September, November. The year prior. Uh, signed, they, yeah, so like six or seven months before that. Right, okay, right, right. Um so negotiations happen around that time. You might you might sign December, January. Mm-hmm. Uh so you've got about four or five months before the season actually starts, but I ended up signing end of March, uh, and I had like a month like, or two I months like before the season miss out started. Pre season, I like that. Miss out on pre season. <laughs> well, coach, coach, I'll be fit. I swear, I'll be fit. Don't worry. <laughs> it was. It was more that um, because it was the the time Richard Cockrell stepped in. I was going to say and, you, you arrived at the same time as him. Almost. Well, I say arrived. Yeah. Like yeah, and it was it was Alan Solomon's before that. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, we'll offer you a contract, no worries. And mm-hmm. then obviously Richard Cockrell hadn't really seen any of my rugby, he hadn't seen me play. Uh, and he, he he didn't didn't really know if I, if if he was going to sign me or not. Um, mm-hmm. But luckily I, I signed a, a one plus one, so an academy contract plus uh, second year as a pro. So it, it wasn't as if I kind of signed straight pro, but I, I knew I had that professional contract in the second year so i had something to, yeah, to look like, forward like to a, about. like a prove it deal like a prove it deal yeah exactly yeah. um but it was it was overwhelming um i was chuffed to bits when i managed to sign it it's obviously starting rugby when i was young it's all i wanted to do really so mm-hmm. well, that's that's the thing i was gonna, like what's it like so you're 21 years old you've now got this academy contract all your mates are because obviously in the borders, we're very much like you just get yourself, get to work. Some some of us go to uni, some of us just go and get to work. What's it like when you're doing that pro contract or your mates are kicking about, like living the dream? Um, I don't know even how to describe it. Like, what's it, what's it just like as a pro player when a lot of your mates aren't pro athletes, like, if that makes sense? So obviously you've still got like the boys back home, like you still keep in touch with the boys. And... Yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, it's you kind of you. You've got your old mates, but you jump from uh, friend group to friend group, and um, you try and keep in touch with them as much as possible. And it, it is difficult, uh, mm-hmm. but I mean, yeah, it's a difficult question because they, they'll obviously be wondering, or oh, how how is he getting on and um, stuff like that. But I think a lot of my friends from school. Uh, they they went on to play further rugby, sign for clubs and and Super Six and and go to university. And I think it's more of the people that went to university that I've not really kept in touch with. Um, right. We'll me- message now and then. Um, and obviously, if I saw them in the street, we'd chat for ages. Uh, mm-hmm. But it they, it does kind of grow a, more like a distant relationship. Uh, mm-hmm. But you, you just kind of grow closer and closer to your rugby mates, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, like the mm-hmm. likes of Craig Pringle, he's and Andrew Grant Sati, they've both gone on to university and, and jobs post university. Uh, mm-hmm. very, like two two of my best mates, but don't keep in touch with them as, as much as I'd like. Uh, mm-hmm. Just because I think when, when they're free at a weekend, I'm playing or i'm busy but then if i'm free or got a holiday then they're they're doing something else so in that respect it's it's very difficult you just kind of you you keep to your friends that you you play week in week in week in week out with uh because you know when they're gonna have time off and you can you do stuff together because you're both free so yeah of course it, it is difficult I can go back have we have we got the same mug by any chance <laughs> uh i not until i'm drunk this <laughs> so I just noticed that I was. Hey, that's weird. that's definitely going in. The fact we've got the same mug, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> just standard coffee. Tesco. <laughs> oh, mate. I think I. Do you know what? I genuinely think I got this for my 
This, Sean, this can go back in the podcast, but this this is meant to be off script, but this is going in the podcast, yeah. This is the best Mother's Day present I think I've ever got, and I don't think my mum's had a chance to use it once. Like, it generally just lives with me, just up and right. down. Yeah, I just went in Tesco looking for a big cup of tea mug for the evening, so find <laughs> this. There you go. Um, did the job. Yeah. The one where it's like, I don't need to go back to the kettle for an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so you actually touched on my next question quite well. So obviously you and you and Richard Cockerell, you pretty much he gets the job at the same time you get your academy contract. Did it almost feel better having a sort of like a brand new coach? Like it was almost like Edinburgh was like like you could like it's quite clear that Edinburgh sort of changed as a club since Cockerell took over. It's like it's became obviously you had like I feel like when the badge changed as well, like everything like it was like the rebrand. It's like this is the new Edinburgh. And like, there's no doubt about it, like the rugby's improved. You're now like, you are you have literally become a consistent part of the squad. Like, how did it feel like when Richard came in? Were you just like, this is like I've got a brand new clean slate to sort of work from here. Like everybody's on the same playing field. Yeah, I think it was it was good and it was difficult at the same time. Um, you know, R- Richard Cockrell's uh, experience and the players that he knows. Like and he that he was bringing in was was obviously very good for the team and what what he did for the team was very good, um, but then with that brings competition. Mm-hmm. So the the likes of uh, <clears throat> bringing in Juan Pablo Cicino, Matt Scott, and I think that was good for my game. It developed my game, watching them and training alongside them, playing alongside them. Uh, that helped me a lot. Um, and push me on further just for the competition. Uh, but initially, I was like, wow, this is going to be very difficult to get into the team. Uh, mm-hmm. And I, I think it was uh, it was a difficult start uh, the first season for me just because when we played pre-season, uh, the, I think it was the second year, the, the year before that, I maybe got capped once or twice. And... The second season, uh, we were playing pre-season games and obviously the Scotland Sevens boys came in to train with us mm-hmm. uh, and they, they were getting a shot in the games and I wasn't really get, getting a look in. So for me, that was that was quite difficult, um, especially when there was players getting played that weren't going to be there that following season. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I spoke to, to Cockers about it and he was, he was very good, um, kind of explained where where I wanted to be playing, uh, where I preferred playing, and and he was it was kind of like a consensus between the both of us um, that that I'd get a shot at twelve at training uh, just to see how it go because um, I think pr- predominantly I came as a thirteen, I came mm. out of Melrose as a thirteen, and then hadn't played too much at twelve just when I was younger, um, yeah. and said to him I'd I'd like to. Have a have a crack at twelve, and um, so he got me in there at training, and then mm. it just kind of it went from there. But I was in loads I, of I, I conversations that, yeah. with people. I love that, like young brass neck twenty one year old. I will take crash ball responsibility. Just give me. <laughs> I will do. I will take the battering for the, the eighty minutes if it gets me on the pitch. Yeah. No, that, that it's, was it's, it. It's, it's worked off. Like you're you're pretty much the stalwart in the you're one of the stalwarts in the Edinburgh team now. Like it's a, you're a name on the team sheet for sure. Like one of the first time. So it has paid off. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it is every time uh, I see that team sheet go getting put up on the Monday morning or Tuesday morning, um, and if my name's there, it's it's amazing. It's really good. It's it's another cap, and um, but it's. It's obviously not taken for granted. The competition, as I said before, is still there. Mm. Um, the likes of the Christine, he's been going very well. So we, we're kind of battling out at the minute. Um, but it's, it's good. He's very experienced. So we bounce ideas off each other, train together. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's good. But I was going to say, yeah. you're, you're quite unfortunate with the. One of the positions that like Scotland seems to have quite an abundance of at the moment, and Scotland and at the pro club level is the centres. And I like your name adds to that. Like it's very much a case of it's like when you talk about Scotland centres, George Taylor is a name, but it's like you like like you say the competition is so high at your position, unfortunately. 
which is even more unlucky yeah. when you're taking, there's technically two centre positions and it's still a high composition play. I mean, obviously, yeah, we all know no, it's very different, but... Um, yeah, so, I've... Oh, no, carry on. Sorry, carry, carry, no, carry on. Just, people want to hear you talk, not me. You carry on if you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, obviously just reiterate what you said. It's the, there are a lot of good centres, and um, if if twelve isn't available, I, I'd take thirteen. But then <laughs> there's uh, there's two great centres <laughs> at thirteen at Edinburgh as well. So you, it's uh, it's so difficult. For the, for the record, cockers, I'll take H two O on the back of my shirt mate, if it gets me on the. <laughs> I only, I only made it to the back pitches. I never got to put on the main one. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Mate, do you, remember, do you remember those old school competitions? It was like the Brewer Dolphin plate and things like that. Do you remember those competitions? Like the cup? Yeah, the Brewer Dolphin playing yeah. at nine o'clock at night. and Yeah, <laughs> like Tuesday afternoon. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mum and Dad's got to take you up to Murray Field. It's the last thing they want to do. <laughs> Mate, not even that. We had, I can't remember, Peebles had some team and it was like, it was like you know when you got to the arse end of nowhere you were halfway there like that's where we were going and like yeah. there was literally like 17 of us on this minibus and a car behind us with two teachers and it was like what are we doing <laughs> like i'm generally sure there was like a like a pull of hands to see whether we just forfeit the game and we were like three hours into the journey. <laughs> just turn around oh, oh. don't do that play if you're playing rugby go play especially in the bruin dolphin you can get to the money field back <laughs> <bitches>. <laughs> So mate, I'm gonna ask you like now. Feel free to don't answer this if you want, but like, so obviously you had the nasty injury against the Dragons this year, when somebody chose to tackle you with their face on your face, which was bang out of order. Like, how was like how was it going before? Because you were like we were saying, you were pretty much the name. You were the name in form, and like, what's it like coming back from an injury like that? Because it's not it's not muscle, if that makes sense. Like, you know, when it's a muscle injury, you can be like, right, yeah, get the, get the rehab done, get back in the gym, and then. Build it up. What's it like when you just have to sort of just sit and wait, and you go, "There's nothing to do here, but just wait." Yeah, well, I think um, I piled on the skinfolds for a start, just sitting <laughs> sitting on the sofa for for eight weeks. But the, K- the KD just rose massively. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but no, it was down in Scarlets is yeah. is when I got it, and it was one of the worst uh, travels back home. Uh, I basically had the option to. Mm-hmm. It was during COVID, so I had the option to f- try and find a hotel <clears throat> and stay overnight mm-hmm. um, or just kind of withstand the pressure of the flight on the face. Uh, and I, I chose to take the flight because I did not want to spend a night in You in are Scarlet. hard as nails. <laughs> <laughs> That's <a> real <laughs> but I, I, think the, I think the doctor was also like, yeah, you, you'll be fine to get on the plane. Just I won't go home. <laughs> <laughs> straight invoice to Scarlet's HQ there. Like, yeah. One one night in the Premier Inn, please, good sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, the, the team doctor was was very good. He um he cleaned up after my my illness issues after the head knock and <laughs> drove drove me to the hospital at one o'clock in the morning after getting back to Edinburgh. Um oh, bless him, man. and then I had I had several scans on my head. And face when I got to Livingston, um, but then between every scan I'd fall asleep. And at, at this point, the doctor was messaging me, um, like, <laughs> "Are you staying in overnight?" Because he he couldn't come into the hospital with me. He was oh, sitting yeah, in the car park in his car. <laughs> yeah, so he was messaging me, trying to call me, but I was having and a you're flat out, my you're flat out. <laughs> <laughs> Um So I got to the the doctor came back. Uh, in the hospital, woke me up and uh, said, "Like you'll be, you'll be staying overnight." So I think it got to half four in the morning when I messaged the doc in the car, saying, mm-hmm. "You can go home, go back to your kids. I'm, I'm staying in overnight." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think he was stuck in his car for about three and a half hours. Man, um, bless it. What's it, what's his name? Team Doctor of Edinburgh. What's his name? Mike Dunlop. Mike, so you're, a, you're a hero for that one, Mike. Well played. I, I owe him one. Yeah, that's that, That's definitely at least a box of beer at some point. You definitely owe him some <laughs> yeah. real talk, Mike. That's definitely some up north <laughs> with him. Definitely. <laughs> right, mate, I'm going to ask you about it. Right, it's, so obviously, give an insight to when we filmed this. The Scotland squad just got released yesterday for the summer tour. Obviously, there's a few big names away with the Lions tour. What do you think of it? I think it's quite good. Like, what's it like seeing the names going in? Really good, yeah. Um, 
you've got 10 guys from Edinburgh, a lot of youngsters in there, which is good to see. Um, like Jack Blay and Jamie Hodgson getting the first mm-hmm. opportunity to train with the squad. Um, and Luke Crosby and Charlie Shield as well. So they've uh, both been in and about it, training with them before. But I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for the young boys to step up and, and show what they've got, especially in the, the Scotland A game. That will mm. that'll be the first game that they play. Um, so, yeah, actually really exciting to to see how the guys go. Right, now I'm going to say this, and you don't have to take any association with this because I don't want you to get in trouble. But I think you should have been in there. And this is not me saying this because you're on the podcast. And this is not me saying it because I've known you for 10 years. But I will say, I think you should have been in that team. Like, was there, did you expect to be called up for the team? Were you just kind of like, were you like, were you proper like, there's a chance, like, there's a chance? Or were you just kind of like, if it happens, it happens? But yeah, it was, it was more, if it happens, it happens. Like, there, there was no expectation, but, um, Obviously, you you try and chance your luck, and from previous conversations that I've had, it it, it wouldn't have been a like I, I would have been extremely happy to be in. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, it, it's just just another kick up the rear to to get better. So um, yeah, it's I like that. Bit, that's a nice, that's a nice positive attitude for it. I like that. <laughs> Bit gutted I'm not in, but you know, there's 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 more doors to be opened, I guess. Yeah, mate. Archer Field will be there all summer. You'll be fine. That's it. The boys, the boys, <laughs> the boys will be in Georgia, and you'll be sat there going, "Oh, lads, it's terrible here. It's only like 23 degrees, like criminal." I don't know how. Yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna cope. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll Jamie, be, I'll be Jamie Hodgson is getting run over by like a pack that is like a combined like, 1,100 kilos, and you're just playing golf. Yeah. I'll be thinking 12 footers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, mate, we're gonna we're gonna talk of we're gonna get rid of the boring stuff now. We're gonna stop talking about rugby because everybody talks about rugby when they come on rugby podcasts. So I'm gonna ask the exact opposite. If you didn't play rugby, what sport would you have played? If you could have do any sport in the world, like just pick it. What was you? You're not allowed to say golf because we spoke about golf a lot as well. Oh. That's my answer <laughs> out the window. <laughs> uh, what what sport do you wish you could have done? Like, what sport would just feel like you came? Like, you know, when you watch like the Olympics and you see some like young five foot like girl throw herself off this pole vault, and you're like, yeah, there's no way that's like that's like how do you train that sport? Like, is there a sport you wish you could do that's just a random sport? Uh, oh, I think I've always watched snooker and mm-hmm. been like. That is ridiculous. Uh, there was there was a clip on on Facebook the other day that was about how they they, they snooked each other like six times in a row or something, but just hitting the perfect ball. And I think if if I was to be good at another sport that isn't rugby or golf, um, it would probably be snooker uh, because it's not strenuous on your body and <laughs> it's. That's the most rugby player it's, answer. Uh, like something that doesn't <laughs> part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like ping pong or something. I yeah. don't know. Uh, but I think if I if I didn't take up rugby, I was I would have tried to. Uh, I was into my football a lot. Like I love I love my football. Mm-hmm. Um, Go on then, team. I, out, out yourself to out yourself to the fans. What's the team? Uh, so I was about to say I I used to love football, but now I never watch it. I I don't have a team. I yeah. <laughs> So I can't answer that question. <laughs> that, I feel like that's a cop out, but we'll let you have it. I'll, I've asked you a couple <laughs> we'll not. Let, I'll let you have that one. You can have that one. That, no team, nothing like frantically ripping down posters in the background. Like that. <laughs> nah, no, no football fan here. No. Nah. Oh, mate, that's I'm I'm an interested to snooker because I think like I find sports like that myself quite interesting. The ones where it's it's so precise and it's down to like you say to hit the perfect ball six times in a row. Because like obviously like yeah. in when you when you do the sports we do there's like like football like like rugby there's a bit of a bar like passes don't have to go exactly to the right place like people can move but like you say these sports that require such a precise and almost like a deafness yeah. of touch like in, it is quite me- mesmerizing when you look at like the sports science behind it yeah um, I, like, I, I don't I don't watch too much of snooker on the on the TV but um, people might watch watch snooker on the TV and be like oh that's that looks quite easy, but 
see if you've ever played on a full size snooker table. It's just oh, I mean, it's it, massive, yeah, isn't it? Different it's level. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I'm like I'm I'm five ten in air boost, so like you can imagine when it's. Like, <laughs> yeah. I say air boost because people got really scared going to say five ten in heels. <laughs> like, right, the, the problem is <laughs> not with the fact you're five ten here; is why are you wearing heels. Yeah. <laughs> right, like, what's the what's the go to pastime of George George Taylor when he's not playing rugby? Like, what's his go to pastimes? Like when he's when you're chilling in the house, what are you doing? Uh, playing Warzone. Really? Um, how many yeah, wins are we talking? How, how many wins are we talking? Uh, I think I'm up to sixty-eight. Right, so strong. Not, not too bad. Oh, you, you're uh, getting a crowd but, amount of wins in there. <laughs> no, I, I do love my warzone. It's we've got a good, a good group of boys on a group chat who on who's, most nights. Who's, so. who's, who's the squad? Who's the go-to? Like, if you could, like, what's what's the squad? Like, when you when you see when you put in. Right, lads, Verdansk, 10 minutes, who's on the plane? What's the three names you hope pop up where it's like, I'm in? To be fair, people that are pretty useless, actually... We, <laughs> I like the, you're, you're, going, you're going the other way around. <laughs> We're just... We, the yeah, on top we, tend to get the, <laughs> <laughs> we tend to get the wins on the more useless people, so just Team KD drops significantly, so... Um, <laughs> Like one but no, I, I play, like decoy, and then just everybody else gets skills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I think the only I play with a lot of rugby guys, but mainly Mark Bennett. Uh, we we've played since Warzone came out, uh, mm. but he he recently made the move to PC, so that oh, means so turning he's, cross he's play like on. Elite and, gamer, elite gamer. Well, you'd think you think he would be being on PC, but actually his KD is uh, zero point seven two or something. So <laughs> that's a call out. Mark Bennett has been that is a call out. <laughs> that is that is a Get great <laughs> great podcast title. <laughs> Mark <laughs> Bennett on smoke up oh, episode two with George Taylor. <laughs> Not mentioned uh, until no, <laughs> he'll he'll probably be in the plane uh, just to to bring the KD down. Uh, <laughs> keep keep you in those good lobbies where the KD's not <laughs> definitely uh, but a, a lot of the boys that we play with um, I actually, we actually met me and Mark met them on online just through friends of friends uh, so we, we met them online I mean Call of Duty not in another, in another way um, <laughs> we, we met them on college. I don't know why you made that there, there was no sinister about what you said until you said in another way and then just like, right. well you know you get you get the odd person thinking the wrong way so I love the, uh, I love the fact that there's now a secret Edinburgh like Tinder profile and it's like just looking for <laughs> Warzone players yeah <laughs> uh, but now we met them start of lockdown the, the first lockdown uh, started gaming with them so we've got a good group of boys on that Decent. So you've still not answered the question though, so you've just got Bennett and you've got two lads from who should not be named. Uh Bennett I'd probably uh oh it's a tough one. There's a there's a boy, Robin Robin Jacobs, he runs a bar in Edinburgh. Um All right, he'll yeah, also it's... bring the KD down, but he uh Go on, we're not sponsored, you can shout out his bar, give him a bit of free promo. Shout out his uh, bar. Salisbury right? Arms. The Salisbury Arms. Comedy Arms pool. Right, yeah. go in there, say George Taylor says Verdansk is hot, and then you might get five percent <laughs> off your ride. Right, who knows? You'll That's get not a guarantee off. before anybody goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy said you can get five percent off, and I'm just like, well, I'm never going back. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's, it's a it's a it's a good bar, mm -hmm. uh, good Mate, for must, sport. So, I must admit, I've never been there in the four years I was in Edinburgh. I've never been there. Yeah, no, I've I've I think I've been there a couple of times, and it was the mm -hmm. first time I met him. Um, was at was at the bar, uh, it, <laughs> like obviously you, it feels like you know him for a while, mm -hmm. just ga gaming online. But um, then you actually meet him. It's yeah, it's, it's good, sociable game. That's yeah. what you tell the missus. <laughs> it's a team building. It's team building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I know. I've now got an image of Cockrell like in one of the squads. Like, oh, like right, let's go and communicate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Like, if if nobody's doing that for your social media department, get a bunch of the lads to play Warzone and just put it on YouTube. Because if you got cockroach on there, it would just get so many views. <laughs> it probably would. 
I think our, <laughs> our communication skills in Warzone are probably actually better than on, on the training pitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, don't tell them that, but just, no. no. Cut that last. <laughs> yeah, last. <laughs> Yeah, for Richard, the fight, they don't, they never play it, man. All they do when they get home is just more push-ups and just study films. It's all they do. Uh, right, just, how's lockdown been for you? How's just life getting on? Like, how are you just, how are you? Like, just, how's George Taylor as a person? Not George Taylor, uh, regular. how's George Taylor as a bloke? Uh, good, yeah. I think lockdown was, lockdown was good. Lockdown was busy for me. Um, mm. Moved back home, because I used to live with my brother in this flat in Edinburgh. Um, and I, th- I think as soon as they announced that lockdown was happening, we were both like, right, let's get ourselves home because if we're stuck in a flat together, we'll be climbing walls and all sorts going on. So, mm, yeah, nothing worse we, than two we, brothers we, locked in a confined Edinburgh flat together for a year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so we got ourselves home pretty quick. Uh, and I, I started basically full time work with my dad in his warehouse so I was I was kept pretty busy nine to five Um, I'd have half five to half eight to get my dinner and chill out and then nine o'clock was was Verdang so <laughs> I, I was kept busy no, no, it was part of the schedule it was daily like it was it was <laughs> ask anyone in the squad it was nine o'clock in lockdown so <laughs> I love the thought of like the whole Edinburgh team like racing a workout at like half six to half eight. It's like that. Got to be. I've got to be showered yeah, and ready for now. Places to be. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's class. Damn. So, um, I right, so the, no, lock, lockdown was was busy oh, for on, me. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, with, with work and stuff, and then um, Dad's got some sheep back home, so that that kept us busy. Had some arguments about that. Um, I about like how many sheep we were going to do. So. I like you just became full borders for a year. <laughs> just like, I'll just go back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty the world's much. gone to shit. What do we do? Farm. We'll just, <laughs> just, we'll farm just farm and eat. We'll just farm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, that's class. Mate, tell me about your shirt because I saw it and I have no idea what it is. What is up north? Uh, so up north is my own business that I started uh, with two others through three and a half years ago so coming on four years now um, basically sell my own biltong nice uh, a lot of it's so biltong is a traditional South African snack uh, just pretty basically air dried beef yeah, so yeah. You, nutritious for those who don't know it's just like a nutritious uh, protein snack um oh, yeah. so started that with myself jason baggett and cameron hutchison uh so we were all in the academy together uh, oh yeah, yeah. Three, three and a half years ago um i always kind of wanted to do something businessy and something outside of rugby so these two got on board and we thought of this idea um we were, <laughs> we were actually sitting in a, an edinburgh cafe in stockbridge uh and someone was munching on Biltong, we were like, we're, we had lost a bit of money on our previous venture that we tried to do. So we were like, right, what can we do? Doesn't involve an investment. Um, and we can just kind of get started straight away. And just, I think it was Cami that was sitting there eating Biltong and Jason being South African, he was like, why don't we start with <laughs> Biltong Company? Um, so then from there, we came, came up with the name Up North um and then one two years down the line uh cam cammy had to he got a contract over in france in nice to play rugby yeah uh, so he he left the business and then jason had rugby and full-time uni to do so his commitments were were pretty high uh so mm-hmm. he also left the business so at the minute it's, it's just myself so um, you, you yourself and i <laughs> exactly um <laughs> I'm the last one standing, but no, it's uh, it's for for anyone like doing rugby, it's um it's a massive part to do something outside of rugby. You know, you mm-hmm. you wake up, you go train, you get back, and you you need a you need a an off button. So for me, say, do yeah. yeah for for me running a business alongside the rugby and kind of learning 
<laughs> that nice Learn easy it. downtime task of running a business. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, mate. I just like oh no, just do it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. It, it's it sounds daunting, but as soon as you kind of look up and uh, study how to actually start a business, it's it's pretty straightforward from there. As long as you get customers buying your stuff. <laughs> Oh, well, don't worry. They'll be flocking in after like all oh, six of my <laughs> listeners listen to this. Don't you worry. <laughs> Half of it'll be me because I'll feel bad. I'll be like, I told everybody I'll buy it. I'll just get it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'll be honest. I'll have to try it. I've not tried any of it, but I do like built on. So that'll do. I'll do it some. Yeah, I'll good post gym snack. Yeah, I was going to say, it beats like penguins and chop up. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's, that's why I, that's why you played center and I played in the front row because it was just like <laughs> you'd, you'd get out and munch high protein jerky and I was like whatever is in front of me I will eat right now because I did not want to be any hungry. Any biscuits in the house. Yeah. <laughs> right, mate. We're gonna go on to the quick fires, mate. We're just gonna get a bunch of little funds this or that just to get like a decent bit. We're gonna find out the real George Taylor by asking him a bunch of very random questions in quick succession. Oh so trick to these quick fire ones is don't think about it. Whatever comes into your head first, that's the one. Right. And if there is right. yeah. if there is a rogue answer, I will call you out on it. <laughs> and we will <laughs> stop and go, George. <laughs> <laughs> and we can cut, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this quick fire thing of just complete block cuts through it the whole thing. <laughs> right, mate, we're gonna start. Think I'm right? Ready. Yeah. Right, start it off nice and easy. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Strong choice. Haggis or black pudding? Haggis. <laughs> night out or a night in? Night out. <laughs> that sounds so like <laughs> <for> that one. <laughs> right, oh, that gives a good question. Type of night in, movie night or gaming night? Gaming night, 100%. Um, you missus loves you for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just, we've just answered this, but COD or Fortnite? COD. <laughs> Arms day or chest day? Arms. Correct answer. Coke or Pepsi? <laughs> Coke. Scoring a try or a try saving tackle? Scoring a try. Strong. Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock? The Rock. Oh, brave. <laughs> <laughs> going for pints or going for cocktails? Pints. <laughs> Mate, cocktails is the correct answer there, we all know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you like to change we'll your answer? That. <laughs> Would you like to change that, your we'll answer? <laughs> As town. Pints and then cocktails. <laughs> What's that? Pints and then cocktails. Pints and then cocktails. <laughs> As a town, Melrose or Edinburgh? Edinburgh. Oh. <laughs> As a town. <laughs> As a town. <laughs> And last but not least, how would you like your steak cooked? Medium rare. Correct. <laughs> Says the guy who sells built up. <laughs> <laughs> They're really well cooked. <laughs> oh, I thought, no- I, thought of- <laughs> I thought of another one. Best sevens tournament in the borders that isn't Melrose. Ooh. Because um... either way, you alienate about six other towns with whatever answer you say. <laughs> <laughs> Erlston. I'm just, I'm just losing you. Friends. You cannot stay, Erlston, man. Erlston, I, I once got a uh, sunstroke at Erlston, so mate, that Erlston, was a good memory. Mate, Erlston's a crack in sevens. There's a good party at Erlston seven. Erlston is a great sevens. Hmm. There you go. That's your, that's your quick fire done. So you've saved it there. There was a few ones that Solid. people are definitely going to ask you and go. <laughs> So what's your real answer to that question? <laughs> yeah, the pint one was a difficult one. The pint one was a difficult. No, I mean, see, everybody's like, no, I gotta go for pints. But I'm telling you, if you if you came up to me with, like you said, see, you're like seven pints in, and you come up to me with another tenants, or you come up to me with like yeah. a strawberry daiquiri, like hand <clears throat> strawberry daiquiri over something, like, that's mine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think I'll be two, two or three pints, uh, and then I'll be espresso martini or onto the rums. Correct, mate. Espresso martini. The problem with espresso martini is after you've had about five, you're like wired because it's like you've had like six. Yeah. <laughs> right, mate. You've now right. We've now looked through you. 
So we're now going to find out about your teammates. So we've got a quick section of teammates. That's what I like to call. So you ever seen um you ever seen like do you remember old Soccer AM like back in the glory days of Soccer AM when it was like the biggest shit house on morning telly you've ever seen? Vividly, yeah, vividly. <laughs> right. So we're just going to ask you. So right, let's start off nice and easy. Hardest tackler at training? Uh, Pierre Schumann. Straw. I didn't expect that answer. Fairness, he is a British shit house, so that's about right. Fastest yeah. feet. Fastest feet. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, oh. he's he gets called Jinky for a reason. <laughs> I'll let you in on a or secret. On who, sorry? Or Damien Hoyland. Yeah, I can believe that to be fair. I can I'll let you in on a secret. So you know Ben Velko who's coming up from uh, Wasps. I was talking yeah. to his teammate on this the other week. Shout back to episode one with Cal Serka. He's uh, he told us that Ben Velcott has the fastest feet at uh, Wasps, so he's the one to watch out for. Right. Apparently he's the apparently nice. he's the training partner when everybody's doing like tackle practice. <laughs> uh, right. Next bit of a funny one. Who's the personification of a turnstile? Who's the guy that cannot tackle for love nor money? He is just a gateway through the defensive line. Oh, <laughs> Blair Kinghorn. <laughs> <laughs> That sounded like, like if I say that one, it won't be too bad. <laughs> you, can't say the, you can't say the fullback, man. <laughs> can't call the oh, fullback well. a turnstile. <laughs> Whoever I'm saying, I'm, I'm chucking them under the bus. So it's fine. We'll just, invite them on. we'll just invite them on and then they just say you for everything. That's how this works. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think, I think, obviously, Blair being at fullback, mm. uh, our defence is usually quite good. So he doesn't have to... <laughs> Tackled too many times, so his stats are a lot harder to be in the in the positives. That was that was the best like self humble brag for that answer. I was just like, well, obviously our inside centre was fucking incredible. So nothing goes past me. Uh, uh, who's most up for a night out? Who's the guy that's on the bus and he's like, right, we're getting a night out. Blair Kinghorn. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Okay. Right. So once you've got this night out, who's the one that can he hack a night out? Who's the one that's in the taxi by 10 p.m.? And you can't say you because you're going to play for dance, good night. It's not that he can't hack it, he just smoke bombs. And that's Mark Bennett. Uh, who can't hack it? Uh, Nathan Chamberlain. Really? Yeah. Oh. Lightweight. Oh man, the boy's like he's like 16, man. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Oh, here's a good one. Who's got the worst fashion sense at the club? Who's the guy that turns Murray up? Murray McCallum. <laughs> I didn't even finish the question. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows Murray, it. Murray. <laughs> what are we talking? What, 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 what style are we talking? Is it like, is uh, it like, a just like, I've bought this designer thing and you're like, mate, that shirt doesn't go with itself. Never mind, like, the shoes you wear. Nah, it's more kind of. I don't know. He buys some rogue shoes. He wears some questionable vests. Um, <laughs> oh, mate, no, you just vests are mandatory. But... <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, the guy that's like November, like snow, not seen sun for like six weeks. He's like, vest. Pink, bright pink baggy vest. That's mad, <laughs> I love that. Right, Murray McCallum, you've officially got the worst fashion sense at Edinburgh, according to <laughs> Uh, who came back with the worst lockdown lid? Who came back and you're just like, mate, get yourself to the like that that needs a homer right now. Or firstly, who uh, gave himself a homer and butchered it? Uh there's a lot of boys that had pretty terrible lids, like they, they all came back with mullets. You're not allowed um, to say Hamish Watson. I refuse you to say Hamish Watson. That's the nah, he, his, he's seen. he's got a strong mullet. Mm -hmm. But I think I think Ben Muncaster, he either did it himself or uh, got one of his mates to do it, but he, he literally put a salad bowl in his head and shaved a zero <laughs> around the sides. So, like yeah, back probably... as well, just... <laughs> yeah, aye, back as well. <laughs> oh, Ben, yeah. Nah. yeah, Ben, that's that's a no. Like, I've like George will tell you, I've not had the best haircuts in my life, but that's a no. Like, that's a big no. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably up there as well, to be fair. But Mate, that, was, you were... that was during lockdown, that was before. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, didn't yeah, have, was... you didn't have a dad telling you long curly hair was like socially acceptable when you were like, <laughs> 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 right, 
Mate, you'll remember from like borders, like it was a it was a strong lid I took with me. That like. <laughs> it was it was an afro. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was the only way I was ever gonna get noticed playing in that team. <laughs> <laughs> He's the lad that came up from the 1980s and just stayed there. All right, that's him. That's right, remember him. <laughs> it was all technique. Uh, who's the biggest joker in the changing room? Who's the who's the prankster? Ooh, um difficult one. Um probably probably Luke Crosby. Really? He's a bit he finds himself a bit of a joker. Uh, <laughs> you said that was such a deadpan expression. <laughs> just, he thinks well, he's was... really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, the the latest thing he did was we had a session on Thursday. Oh yes, a story. He, it's always good when you give a description. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> had a session on Thursday. Um, Charlie Shiel had went home uh, after lunch. Uh, we finished up lunch. Crosby ate a banana, but Charlie left his boots uh, <laughs> under the chair. So Crosby stuffed his boot his boots with this banana. Uh, and we weren't we weren't in training until Tuesday. That's so, that's, that's quite frankly honking. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's like Crosby takes it too far sometimes, but that's the sort of stuff he does. Uh, you, no, if you leave if you leave your boots under the chair, it's fair game. That's like that's honking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm struggling to think who do you just tell Charlie has to buy a new pair of shoes or do you do it right, Luke? You owe him a new pair of boots. <laughs> Uh, well, Luke, Luke wasn't actually when Char- Charlie found them. Luke wasn't actually there, so uh, the instantly Chico, Chico was like, mm, "Was that Crosby?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Obviously, yes." <laughs> All I can confirm is it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> under the bus. Who was? I saw this on your Instagram. Who was it that threw an egg at your car just randomly? <laughs> Luke Crosby. Because <laughs> I've never seen it. I was just seeing it and I was just scrolling, like, you know when you do like I think I was at work or something, you know, like Skype and just like scrolling. I was just like yeah. I'm like, hold on. Like, I've just seen a guy get out of the car and get pelted with eggs. What's happened? And then went back and it was like, you know, there's absolutely no context to the story, just somebody getting pelted with eggs. <laughs> right, well, pa- Paddy Harrison the hooker. Um mate, well, I know you, Paddy. You'll, we, we you'll know, yeah. To play with, we used to play with his brother, mate. I mean he used to play with Jack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so Obviously, Paddy used to be at 12, didn't he? Last year, for biggest. He's just a farmer, like farmer as <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, so funny you say that. He, he brought he brought loads of eggs into training and started punting them. So he'd be charging <laughs> boy, he'd be charging boys three quid for 30 eggs, which is class. Hey, that's phenomenal. Pad, Patrick, so help, help an old mate out. I could do with that. <laughs> <laughs> Hook the man up. Yeah. No, but um, I, I actually I, I started the, the chaos, but Crosby bought 30 eggs. Um, so I, I just picked, picked up an egg. I was like, oh, I can have a look, and then just chucked at his feet. Just cra- <laughs> cracked an egg, wasted an egg, uh, just because it was Crosby. So uh, I then bought 30 eggs, and he picked up an egg of mine and launched it at my windscreen. So <laughs> he just crossed the line. But... <laughs> Oh, I, I don't mess back. with man's car. Don't mess with man's car. No. <laughs> what did you do to get him back? <laughs> uh, egged his car. Fair, yeah, that's 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 a fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all's right in the world as far as I'm concerned. Right? Everything's in balance. <laughs> right, so we found out that Luke Crosby is the biggest prankster, and Patrick Harrison has an abundance of eggs. <laughs> who's yeah. the best dancer in the squad? Who's the one that's like on a night out or in the po- the post win dressing room dancing? Who's the one that's always two stepping? Like, you know, the one where it's like everybody sat down, absolutely knackered, and this one guy just clearly gave like 70% of the game and he's still got energy to like two steps. Uh, you probably got to say Christine. He's always up dancing. Uh, even Christine when dancing. everyone's gone home, he's still dancing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody's like, Chris, that's great, but the team boss is leaving, so if you could please get in the show. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. he, he's the dancer on the night out. <laughs> right who's the one so I've written this down as Skip's leg day but that's not what I mean but I had to abbreviate it who's the one that's like you never see them in the gym but they're somehow just massive like I remember you hear all these oh. stories about like the Fijians that just like you never see them lift a weight but obviously they're built like they're made out of like, granite so who's the one that's like that yeah. who's just like who's the guy that's like you just think like 
I've never seen you do any strength and conditioning. How come you don't fit into like a three XL shirt? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, obviously all the Fijians they're they're just ridiculous in the gym. Anyways, if they yeah. if they lift a weight, they'll put on size that next day. Um, but I've never actually seen Duan Van der Merwe do a full gym session. I've seen him do <laughs> arms, but you'll never find Duan doing legs. What, what else is there? Just arms. <laughs> <laughs> just arms. Just arms. <laughs> I know it's like you're gonna train something different today. Yeah, I might do triceps. That's me. But that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Nah, you'll never catch him doing legs. <laughs> oh, fair play. Well, uh, Duhan, you scared the shit out of me. I'm not gonna say anything bad about you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's the one guy in the team you could see as like a future coach? Who's the one guy? It's like ah, uh, you're you've got rugby coach material written all of you. Obviously, a lot of boys do coach in their spare time, but who's like yeah. you could be a head coach? You, you could be a head coach for a professional team. Uh, Henry Pergos. He, really? Yeah, his knowledge is crazy of rugby. He, he knows what he's on about, and I think he actually he's doing his level two or level three at the minute. So yeah, I can see him doing well in the coaching ranks. Mate, fair play. Henry Pergos amazes me, man. I swear he's been around for like thirty years, and he's still only like twenty nine. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like Henry. Yeah. I swear I've been watching you play since I was like fifteen. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> I get that feeling as well. <laughs> Uh, right, who's the who's the designated DJ on the bus? Who's like the one that's like when it's like right lads, give me the ox cord. Who's the one that everybody just turns around and looks at and goes, yeah, this is your job. Uh, probably Blair, uh, but at, at recent at recent away games, it's been Marshall Sykes. Um, really, <laughs> but he 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 quickly got stripped of that because he I think he played like a Jungle Book Club remix or something. Uh, and we were down in Scarlet's and it was the door was wide open and it got very embarrassing so uh, yeah probably Blair <laughs> man Blair, Blair King was a party animal from the answer to go oh, you're going to have to ask Blair on a night out uh, who's the one guy that's just hard as nails like you know just naturally just like you are you could batter anybody like the one guy that's like you're the guy that gets to go in the center and like you're in a ruck and you say something and then just stand behind this one person who is it? Uh, the person I'd least mess with is probably Crosby. Uh, obviously, being from from Livingston, uh, mate, that's a shocking he, he told, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, I'm he, just gonna he keep. I'm me. gonna just try and make Crosby fight because then he can just come on this and if he just wants to slate me for an hour, he can just slate me for an hour. But at least I'll be he'll slate. He'll slate you for more than an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Um, Luke, come on, just let me for an hour. I'll take it. <laughs> so I Can't think in, the, in in Livingston at, at school, when you joined high school, you got asked if you had older siblings, um, really? and if you said, "Nah, I'm the eldest," then you'd like you you basically get battered for your whole whole school years. So he grew up in school just getting getting battered and then his younger brother came into Livy school mm. and obviously he was like yeah Luke Crosby is my older brother and he was he was left untouched uh, so, <laughs> so I think Crosby uses that as as, as his younger brothers are joining us so he uses that to get free stuff built in his house and <laughs> Make uh, quite right. if I've so, been battering for six years on behalf of my little brother yeah. I didn't know I was in it for. He's protected his younger brother for six, seven years. That's meant like. I tell me they didn't do that, at Austin. They definitely didn't do that, at Peoples, man. We were we were too busy. Nah, no, to Austin. Posh. Nah. We were too busy <laughs> pretending to be posh at Peoples. Yeah. What was it like? What was it like? At Loretto was just like, no, don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> um, close, yes. <yeah. laughs> nah, it, oh. it was good, but it, 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 it's quite different in the two schools. Yeah. yeah. They are. Right, final one of teammates' quick fire questions. Which is the guy that hogs the mirror the most after training? Who's the one that's always putting the gel in the hair after the game? Knows he's, knows he's got a cheeky post match interview coming up on Premier Sports and he's like, just get the hair looking good. Uh, I, I, I would say Dewey, but it's probably probably Jaco van der Volt more really? because he's, yeah, he can't, he, he can't just step out of shower and, and look all right. He's got to sort. His, He's got his to... issues going, <laughs> going on at the front of the head. <laughs> oh, mate, it's fine. It's some fringe on it, to be fair. Like, I respect it. 
I just see I want it like if that was me, like I would be immediately thinking anytime I'm running full pelt, the hairline will be on show and that would be my <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, no. Sponsored by McDonald's, <laughs> man, like comes up with a logo. <laughs> <laughs> right, George, this has been class chatting to you, and we've only got one question left, and it's the one question I gave you some time to prepare for. So yeah. Blair Kinghorn, he's not made the squad. For God knows what reason he's not in the squad. You've just had a massive fifty point win over Glasgow. Bus back. It's a Saturday night. You can hear that why not tunes are ready to be bouncing. Shout out to why not for anybody that's been to Edinburgh. You're there. <laughs> Boys turn to you. El Capitano turns around and goes, George, you've got three songs. What three songs are you picking and tell me why? So start with number one. What song are we picking at number one? Well, yeah, we, when you initially asked it, um I, I picked it because it's it was our winning song at Melrose. So nice. if we if we had a solid win, we we'd play that at Melrose. So whenever I, I go go on a night out with the Melrose lads, this would be the song that I'd chuck on and it would be um Let's Do It Again by J Boog. Uh, great song. Great, great song. <laughs> a solid song. But I, I think like it wouldn't get the recognition at, at Edinburgh. Um Apart from the likes of Lewis Carmichael and and Demo and stuff like that, mm. so you can you can bring that culture with you though. It's all about bringing a winning culture. Just say that and then just keep playing. True, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just take uh, two medals and be like, we've got the double. So <laughs> this is the song. Yeah. Look, look at Crosby and be like, until Livingston win the double, we will happily play this. Song. <laughs> right, song number two. You've you've just played this. Every lad is now thinking, I don't play for Melrose. What's the song to? How are you winning the crowd back with song two? Uh, it'd be Pour the Milk by Robert Doherty. So that's like a bit more bit more upbeat, a bit more techno. Uh, Something that gets, gets the toes tapping. I like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a simple song, but it, yeah. it sounds good. I like that. The, lad, the lads can see the lights flash and they can see the booth. <laughs> They're like, yeah, we're out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. So you've, got, yeah, so you've got song three, the bus driver's agreed to drop you off on George Street. Tables are booked. You've got one song. You've just entered like Princess Street. What song oh, are you going with? Final song? Uh, so I chose Heartbroken by T2, but great <laughs> tune. Probably controversial, but I love it. Is that the Gets one? Is, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think which one it is. Is it the one where it was like... Um, it was the three, like, it was the, I don't want to sing it because I'm just going to ruin myself today. Is it, it came out like, it came out when we were like 15 or something. I'm just going to sing it. It's like, I'm yeah, heartbroken. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. One. Yeah, is it that one? Oh, yeah. banger, respect. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I found it on Spotify one day. I was like, oh my God, that is a, that's still a tune. So, <laughs> Mate, I wouldn't care what the audience say. It's good. <laughs> You're just like, this one is for me, lads. I'll be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so heartbroken by t2 what a final choice that is that's absolutely class i love that you just went nah just forget the boys we'll just do t2 at the end and that's me and i'm out <laughs> if the rest of the boys come in the club they, they'll come in but i'm definitely going in <laughs> right yeah, guys that's bang, actually yeah, going. Yeah, quite right right guys that's actually us so we're gonna do that um there's no sponsor on this episode so screw it this episode is gonna be proudly sponsored by the boys of blokes that's the wrong side move the microphone yeah, the team blokes, mental health. Make sure you always come check us out. Come there. We try to get boys talking on forums. Make sure guys, young lads, get into talk. And make sure mental health's going out. And do you know what, George? Because you came on, help the boy out. Eight-year-old favorite IOU. Get the shirt on show. This this episode is proudly sponsored by Up North Biltong. Is- make sure you get your Biltong. George will sign a package for you. Tell you come down. You'll get Crosby to sign them as well. Just be like Crosby. <laughs> just throw eggs at the box and then just be like, you can have them. Crosby. <laughs> you get a free egg with it. Yeah, so make sure I'm going to leave all George's stuff. George, where can they find you on socials? Where, what's your Instagram handles? And we'll get you, we'll get you sorted uh, out in there. All socials is just up north built on. Uh, Amazing. And same with the website. So yeah, so we'll get that there. Come check it out. Like I said, you can also find George on Instagram. George is there underscore George Taylor, I believe, is it not? Yeah, yeah, that's, so that's the one. Underscore George. Follow the podcast. Give us like ratings. Make sure you follow us on Apple, Spotify. It helps us out more, and you'll know. Keep up to date with on socials. As always, any constructive criticism, always welcome. If you're going to just be mean, at least make it funny because then I can retweet it and get some likes that way. And then I guess it's going. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching. George, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, mate. Hopefully we'll get you on again sometime. We'll see you in that Scotland squad that I keep asking you about and you've been completely neutral in, so no hate from there. 
<laughs> yeah, guys, thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching. If you've watched on YouTube, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, thank you. Cheerio. Bye. Cheers, Sam. Appreciate Bye, it. Sam.